myself, Mangesh Patankar. I am also a developer advocate uh, from IBM. I think you heard Sai in the morning who come, came from Austin about the uh, kickoff of the event. Uh, but I'm going to take it forward uh, with a particular topic, which is Istio. Uh, myself uh, can be reached on this particular email ID. If you have any doubts, you can write to me. My Twitter handle is at Mangesh Patank, OK? And uh, I'm going to take one of the examples from IBM Code Patterns. How many people have heard of IBM Code Patterns? OK, only few. Yeah. So uh, I think it will be a good thing to know as a developer. Yeah. So let's get started. Uh, what is to today's agenda is I'm going to start with the uh, evaluation of microservice. I think a lot of things have been covered in the morning. I will try to keep it short. Post that, uh, I will talk about the relation of microservices with the container. And after that, we'll get into uh, today's uh, main talk about service mesh. I will show some of the features of this Istio on this uh, platform, right, with using IBM code. So um, how many of you have worked on microservices applications have developed? So uh, I think it will be a repetition for you guys, but then just to make a uh, kind of a ground about knowing what is monolithic and what is microservices, I think the diagram is not pretty clear, but what I'm trying to show here is uh, as I am started my development in 2000 where I think uh, microservices was not alive, web services which got evolved I think after 2005. Uh, but uh, as you move into the microservice architecture, you have different containers. I think we spoke about Docker in the morning. So this is how you move from shift from a monolithic application to a microservice applications, right? Uh, the advantages, I think a uh, few advantages, are like you can scale only the piece of uh, that particular microservice which has to be scaled. Uh, there are multiple advantages, you can update only that part, right? Uh, and then uh, if you want to make a use of technologies like Dockers and containers, you can use microservices and deploy into the platform. But as you move on, right, uh, there will be multiple microservices um, getting created, right? Maybe you're in a migration phase where you're trying to break your monolithic application into a microservices. Uh, it would be really easy to start with, but as you move on, uh, you need to take care of something like a, the interactions which will happen in the microservices, right? So maybe if you have few microservices, maybe the complications are not that much when you are going to do a communication between the microservices. But as you move and you have more containers, right, then what, what happens, right? There will be a communication happening between all these microservices uh, which needs to be managed. And first of all, if you have more containers, you need something like a orchestrator, right? I think you heard about Kubernetes and as Sai said, this is more like a Kubernetes uh, conference. It's not more of a container conference, but then again, you need to like, uh, Kubernetes, so it comes into the layer five, right? So where you have Kubernetes, you have even off the same offerings from Docker, then Apache Mesos is there. These are the multiple things which are available. And uh, you start with, uh, I think, if you have a developer more than 10, 15 years, you might have used physical infrastructure and develop your applications. Uh, mostly for the enterprise applications, it is still the case, right? If you are from the enterprises like banks or uh, insurance, they are still using the infrastructure which is available with them. But I think there are a couple of guys from startups, they have started using these technologies. Then on top of that, uh, that's not today's discussion, but there is something called as a days, which is again uh, a kind of a workflow which can be developed using the container. So that's also not the today's discussion, but that gives. So uh, what we are saying is we have Kubernetes to have the microservices to be deployed on the platform. Uh, so what is Kubernetes? It is in a container orchestrator, as you have seen, right, you need to manage your containers. So you have a orchestrator like Kubernetes. It will be used to manage your containers. It supports multi-cloud. It is even a cloud native, right? So you can also deploy it in your private environment. And uh, just a history about it, right? So Google has been using since 2003, and they have exposed that after 2013. Uh, this has been uh, contributed in Google. Uh, there's something called as Bog, if you heard, and after that there is a Omega which was parallelly running, and it has been uh, basically handed over to the CNCF, uh, where uh, it is going to take over from the Google where they have left, right? So uh, you are more conversant with the Kubernetes. I think this slide was in the size uh, 
presentation I'm not going to walk through, but then again, these are the features you'll get, like there's a scheduling, there's a self-filling, if one of the pod goes down, uh, the Kubernetes platform will take care of that. Then it will do a horizontal scaling, go on adding your containers with the pod, uh, with the control of the pods. So uh, these are the features you have seen. So uh, this is a simple architecture diagram, right? So you have the controller element, which is the Kubernetes master. And then you can have one or multiple worker node depending on the kind of deployment. So if it is a used for a test environment, probably you will have only one worker node and one master node. But then as your requirement grows and if you go into a kind of N plus one kind of architecture, probably you need some thing like a robust architecture where you have multiple containers, multiple con running in a different nodes and obviously it could be even a multi-zone, right? So when you are proposing a solution to the enterprises with the DR, right? You need to have the multi-zone kind of uh, Kubernetes deployment where it could be in the multiple zones. So uh, this is a simple uh, cluster where you have a master and then you have a worker and then as pod is the smallest unit of deployment in the Kubernetes, you have the uh, pod which could have a single container or it could have a multiple containers. And then of, of course you have the master node where you have the uh, controller uh, APIs which are uh, running, which will make sure that whatever deployment you do is taken care by the controller. And uh, what is the beauty of this Kubernetes? I think it is not covered in your talk. It is a disc declarative language, right? You need not go and do some kind of provisioning of that. You have to just write in a YAML file, right? So you should know YAML where you'll write that I want to create a kind of, let's say, deployment or I want to create a kind of um, services, right? All those things are declarative, right? So you need to be very works with the language of YAML. Uh, that's not today's talk anyways, but I'm just telling you it's a declarative language. Right, so what we are saying that microservices is a platform where you can deploy uh, the um, uh, Kubernetes as a platform, sorry, for the microservices. But then a discussion why we need a service mesh, right? So we saw the diagram where there is an interaction which is very simple when you are going to start with the, let's say, less microservices. But as you scale up, there is a lot of community that happens and there are a lot of things which you need, right? So these are the, I think that's a pretty, pretty uh, big slide with the text, but uh, what is that can't be covered in the Kubernetes? So there is a component called service, right, in a Kubernetes, which is like exposing a pod as a service, right? So you need not worry about if it has to be stateful, you will have an attached uh, persistent volume where the uh, sa uh, saving of that data will happen. But when you want to use it in an environment where probably you need this kind of features, right? So if you want to have a traffic management, you want to have multiple uh, API version. For example, there is something called as canary development. Have you heard of canary development? Right, so canary is like uh, you have already rolled out one version and probably you want to test a new version and then probably you want to put it in the production and see what is the performance and you, based, based on the performance, you try to roll it out with the maximum weightage, right? So we'll see how Kubernetes will add value in that. Then there is something called as uh, there are multiple uh, plugins which are available with the platform, uh, which will help you to do kind of tracing. I think uh, Sai had shown a, a demo on Zipkin, then Jagger, these are Prometheus, these are all monitoring tools which can be plugged in into the Kubernetes platform. And, and what platform we are going to see now is the service mesh, which will do the L7 level of metrics, right? So because uh, whatever Kubernetes service gives is more like a L4. And if you want to get into more like a network trafficking, you want to do the monitoring of network, you want to see what, what, how the services are running, you want to see whether those are resilient, right? If there is a timeout, what, we'll see those in the individual slides, right? So when you want to build a service mesh, what exactly it does, right? Uh, so it has something called as a sidecar, right? So when you have a particular microservices running here, Right, so uh, you will see another sidecar container which is running, right? So you can have a, a different uh, container for running, uh, running those services or it could be a part of the same, right? It's your design, right? And then you have something called as, as Kubernetes has a master and a worker node. Worker node is where exactly your applications are running, right? Pods are running. Here it also, there is something called as a control plane and there is a data plane. Data plane is where your applications are running and control plane where exactly you're trying to do uh, kind of a control main, like uh, there, is, there could be a discovery, there could be a pie, uh, there are different features, there could be some kind of uh, uh, security level thing, routing rules, all those are tricked by the control plane, right? 
So uh, what are the different uh, service meshes which are available, right? So if you see in the market, there are a couple of them. So there's a Linkerd, there's a Conduit, uh, then Istio, Istio is getting more popular because it has been uh, very words well tested with the Kubernetes as a platform. So you have a lot of plugins which will help you to get into the platform, but of course you can use it with the other uh, tools like console or Docker directly, right? So uh, what we have to see is what is the Istio as an architecture, right? So Istio, as I said, or any service mesh which has to take care of the um, kind of routing, these are the two controlling uh, planes. One is the data plane and one is the uh, control plane. In a control plane, you have components called pilot, mixer, which will take care of, so when we say pilot, right, what pilot does, pilot knows the path and basically goes into that particular thing, hence the name. So it has a routing mentioned in the configuration where you say that uh, if these are the services to be called, this is the path which will be followed. There are, you can define routing rules in that. Then there is a second component called as mixer, which is more like if you want to attach with the policy configurations, you want to add uh, the configurations on top of it, then you have a mixer. Mixer is more useful when you want to basically monitor those services, right? So when you really want to monitor, you need the, the tools like Zipkin, Prometheus, Grafana. These are all basically kind of different monitor tracing tools which could be plugged in in the Mixer API. So there is an API of Istio in which is called Mixer where you can extend and you can have you can write your own uh, uh, APIs also to do that. The major component here is the proxy. So when we are saying we want to really control the traffic which is coming to the microservice and it is going out, we are going to use the Istio uses something called as an envoy. How many people have heard of Envoy? Right, a couple of them. Right, so um, Envoy is the architecture which has been contributed by Lyft and IBM and Google. These are the three people who have uh, been contributed like as an open source in Envoy. So Envoy is like a reverse proxy, right? So there will be multiple uh, co components which will be calling that service and multiple components may be again calling the other services, right? So it is like a reverse proxy which will take care of the uh, traffic which will come and go out of the microservices. So uh, this is a simple diagram where it shows that uh, uh, how basically the data plane looks and the control plane I think components we have explained. So data plane is the plane where actually you have the components deployed, right? So these are all microservices. The beauty of Istio is it is it is platform independent, right? So for example, today's discussion is about the microservices in Java, but then you can have any kind of implementation language, right? So you can have it written in another languages, right? You can have Python or some other APIs, uh, which uh, languages where you can expose it, right? So it is independent of the platform. So if you have used ESP, how many people have used ESP in past, right? People who are basically from the regular monolithic application development where they have used web services and they have integrated through the ESP service bus platform. Similarly, some of the features which are seem overlapped by this, but this makes this platform independent because if you have ESB, you have very platform specific APIs which has to be written. For example, if you have written something in ESB and tomorrow you want to revolution the, uh, the APIs, right? You want to use some latest API which has come, it becomes very difficult. You need to redevelop that. So there are a lot of uh, pain points which you see in the monolithic application which could get resolved because of the microservices implementation. And then all these frameworks, right? I think since morning we are uh, hearing about a lot of uh, technology jargons, right? Because I was part of this open stack where there are a lot of frameworks, June and all that. I think I have even nev never gone into those details. But I'm saying, uh, just to make it simple, what we have right now is a proxy kind of uh, framework where it will try to make the uh, whatever services are which are all platform dependent, it will try to monitor the traffic which is coming into the uh, particular microservice and going out of the microservice, right? So. So this is a diagram actually, if you see these are all, uh, what you see green, these are all microservices and then you see a sidecar there and then there is a communication happening into this. And then there is a control plane where when particular request comes in, you have different type of policies or maybe you have some UI which will try to make you help what, what is that exactly is getting controlled by this particular platform, right? So this is uh, to show about the component, but again coming into the, uh, individual components, right? So we spoke about a proxy which is Envoy here, and then you have a pilot which is a kind of a routing mixer is more like a, a attaching policies to it, 
and then you have this monitoring tools like Prometheus and all that. These are all like an adapters which are written into the mixer uh, APIs where it will make easier for anybody to implement any new framework comes in or you can write your own frameworks also. YAMLs as the rules on the top of the uh, deployments what you have done, right? And uh, this is like an injectable framework, right? So if you have a microservices already developed, there is a manual injection you do which will basically create a kind of a wrapper over the microservice and uh, it will help you to monitor that particular service, right? Whatever traffic is coming and going out, it could be monitored using and apart from that, you can do all these things, right? So then there is a traffic control. Let's say you want to, uh, you have two different versions running and then you want to control the traffic there, right? And you have, in that traffic control, there are multiple things. There is a traffic splitting, there is a traffic uh, steering and all that. Those, those concepts, uh, I think we'll cover in the next slides. So when you say resiliency, right, these are the things which comes as a part of. So there could be timeouts, there could be um, retries, there could be, there's something called as circuit breakers, right? So you need to define those circuit breakers in case of um, uh, the resiliency, how it will help to make sure that your applications and response uh, to the user requests. There is, a, there is a fault injection. You can even control the connection pool size, right? So if you see on the left side, uh, this is an example for a connection to a DB. Yeah, so it's an Eclipse uh, contribution uh, two years back where you, it, like it is like a API which has the uh, similar APIs to, from the Java perspective where it makes it from the development perspective of the microservice, it makes its life easier, right? You can develop those microservices which are in Java using MicroProfile. So I will share a link where you will get that in reference, but this app is a conference app where you have five different services there and those services, uh, there is one web service which is uh, like a web app, app service which is like a front end UI service and there are three micro services at the, running at the back end and there is one cloud end service which is database as a service. So these are the three different services. We'll, uh, we'll inject that uh, with a Istio platform. Uh, this is how we'll see. And uh, if, the, uh, if I have to zoom it, this is how it looks, right? So there is a speaker web service, there is a a session web service, there is a vote web service, there is a schedule. Uh, once I show you the uh, application, it will be more clear. And at the back end, there is a cloud database. So there are, uh, I, I'm going to showcase three demos here, which will basically make sure that uh, you understand the features. And there are multiple, there are more than uh, three, but then uh, I will try to cover those three. So what is the first scenario is as I was showing a, um, that particular tech uh, slide where you had like one connection, one connection is in the waiting state and then whatever other requests come in, those will not be actually taken care by this particular pilot. And how you do that, you define a destination policy and that is applied to this particular uh, deployment, right? So that's a uh, de uh, uh, demo I'll cover. The another uh, thing which I'll cover it is about the uh, the time uh, the for example let's say um, you have a container which is broken right so if the requests are coming and they are going to that broken probably it may not able to serve the request so what you need to do is you need to divert those services to the um, uh, the pod which is available right so that is taken care uh, by this uh, policy destination policy Okay, and then uh, there's something called as, for example, there could be a timeout also, right? So if the timeout is going to happen, probably you need to make sure that it gets addressed um, in the application itself. So these are the three scenarios I'll talk about. Uh, I will just finish the presentation and come to the demo mode so it will be easier, right? So the another thing is traffic control and the visibility. So for the traffic control, uh, I think this diagram you will get from the uh, Istio as well, uh, site where istio.io, there is an example. So, uh, this talks about traffic slitting, right? So for example, you are in a, uh, let's say in a scenario, you, there's a canary development, right? You have developed something and you want to basically test the load. So you will just pass on the 1% load to that service, which has already tested, but you want to see how it responds in the real time scenario. So uh, once you are basically uh, comfortable with the response and whatever it has worked, you can always do that with the weight change. So there is something called as a weight, right? So 99% load will go to the version one and the version two, which is in alpha right now, uh, it will be given with the 2% load. Another example here is contain-based routing. For example, I think um, Sai gave a uh, uh, demo about the Firefox, if the requests are coming from the Firefox, right? So you have something called as a user agent, right? 
uh, based on the user agent, you will try to filter it, right? So, uh, so maybe people who are from the Java and they have used serverless, right? There was something called a servlet filtering, right? So similarly, you can even filter, but this is more like a configurable. You write in uh, the YAML file and then you inject into your application. So this is how it shows like if the users are from iPhone, uh, they should go to this particular service which is deployed. If it is from other, it should go to that. Then uh, I think this is a part, uh, I think demoed, uh, I'm not going to show this demo, but uh, a brief about it. It's whatever traffic comes in, you have uh, different dashboards. You can define your own dashboards or there are uh, dashboards you will get uh, built in uh, where you will see what is the request which are there. So it gives you the mess metrics. Then uh, I think I explained this like uh, a mixer has an API where it could be plugged with the different kind of adapters. So you get out of the box Prometheus, in, in, uh, there is a Grafana and then you can have your own custom adapters also written where you, you can make your own dashboards. So uh, even the traceability, I think he has uh, shown a uh, Jagger one where he has shown that this is the how the uh, service took time for, uh, for that particular to get executed. What was the time for that? Right? So I think let's get into a demo mode now. So So I'm uh, so in Kubernetes there is something called as kubectl, right? Is a which is a client, and now this client which is installed on my machine is going to talk to the cl uh, cluster which is deployed. For that you need to get a configuration, and then you have to export. Then it will point to that thing. I think uh, I'm going to skip that. But then what I'm going to show here, what are the different? These are the five microservices which are de uh, deployed here, right? So what what is the deployment here is uh, microservices. Um, uh, about the session, speaker, and uh, vote, and there is a Cloud and DB, right? So if you look at the application, right, so I'll just show you an application. So uh, this is a application uh, which is uh, listed on the micro, uh, the Eclipse Microsoft profile, and this has been extended and used in this particular deployment. So, and this is the code pattern. If you go to developer.ibm.com, that's code, you will get multiple code patterns, but if you go to the uh, container, uh, then you'll get these particular make Java services resilient. So you can even replicate what I'm sh showcasing right now. And uh, if you click on the video, you will see what is that it comes, uh, basically demos. And if you su see the get code, you will get taken to the GitHub. So what currently it uses? It uses micro profile, it uses Istio point eight. Uh, Kubernetes cluster which is managed on the platform, uh, then there's a cloud and DB, and then uh, you can even use the deployment tools, like the, you can have a tool chain where you can deploy on your console. If you go and see in the console, uh, I think this was shown, but then again, I'll just repeat this. So you have, I have this cube demo MDP, uh, which is my clus uh, Kubernetes cluster. There are three nodes, right? Three worker nodes which are there. And uh, there's a dashboard also here. I can go and change my. So this is the Kubernetes ba basic dashboard. I think if you use Kubernetes, you know uh, you can see uh, the traffic and everything also here, CPU usage. Let's come come back to uh, our application. So now this application is using this different microservices, and then there is a, a cloud a cloud and database, right? So these are the services which are running. Uh, more important when you deploy this, you need to see this two by two, right? So there should be two containers running. So one is for the sidecar, right? If you understood uh, what I'm saying, you need to have one more container, uh, container which gets basically sidecar, as a sidecar to your application so that it can ma monitor what is coming and what is going out, right? So now let's go to the first uh, demo. So I'll just show first application how it is running, right? So uh, this is an application right now. Uh, so you have speakers. Uh, so if I go here, uh, you have speakers, right? If I click on speaker, uh, you see the data. So this is a speaker microservice which is getting called at the back end. And the front end is by the AngularJS, uh, which is again a uh, web app. This is a microservice which is internally calling these services. Uh, if you go to uh, stations, then you can cl click on particular station and then probably go and vote there. Right now, if you see, I have just, uh, uh, open this mode where you see the six because this is important. I don't know this green one is getting hidden here because of this display. Uh, but uh, the green one shows that now all the requests are going to right. So now we are going to replicate the first scenario. So for that we need to apply something called as uh, the circuit breaker, right? So we are going to develop a circuit breaker. So if you see that circuit breaker, I'm just going to use this 
So this is about the maximum connections, right? So if there is one connection is coming, second will be in waiting and other three will not be responded, right? So if I go to the application now and then apply through this kubectl, so this is, now it is running, I'm going to go and apply this circuit breaker. So once the circuit breaker applies, it will say that this configuration got applied. If you want to see uh, what is there in that, uh, I'll just quickly show. But I have only three minutes left, so maybe uh, I'll just show, uh, share the GitHub URL. But if I'm going to hit now uh, the services here into my application, right? So if, if so currently there are votes shown here, right? So this is the area where there are no votes right now. If I go to session, click on particular thing, and then I vote here. And then I, let's say I keep on voting, 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 voting. So it's not able to show, show you here, but uh, let's say I put a request. But uh, I think ideally what should have happened, one request, other three requests should have failed, right? So it should show, show me the 500 error, uh, which should be shown in this. Instead of 200, I should have got uh, the 500 error here. Anyways, I think uh, the demo part, I think we have a booth outside, uh, so uh, you can uh, come there and uh, see the capabilities of this platform. Uh, uh, there is a meetup group which is run in Bangalore as well. Uh, so Rajesh, uh, he is also from uh, the developer advocacy, he is based off Bangalore, I am from Mumbai. So we do run meetups where these small topics will be taken as a hands-on workshop or maybe we have a developer days, right? So uh, to summarize quickly, uh, so what we have seen is, uh, the how uh, microservices uh, got evolved, and then uh, what are the networks which are required, uh, for example, as a service mesh, what is the requirement? And then we have seen a couple of uh, capabilities which will get into the platform using service mesh, right? Uh, thank you, I think uh, I will conclude here. Yeah.